benefit of looking big and muscular is that you look dangerous. You have more of an intimidating presence. For that reason, people just tend to try you less. And personally, that's probably why I haven't gotten into many altercations over the years. But somewhere, I still doubted myself. What if I was to get into a fight? What if I had to defend myself? Yeah, I'm a relatively strong guy, but we all know that fighting ability does not directly correlate to how much muscle mass you have. This is what set my new quest into learning a new skill, boxing. But I had one issue. How do I balance this while still pursuing my fitness goals? Because if you know anything about boxing, it's highly cardio intensive, so the goals are a bit conflicting. So it did take some trial and error, but in today's video, I'm going to share with you exactly how I do it. Then from there, you might be able to spark some inspiration. First thing I had to ask myself was which one was more important, because that's going to dictate how we actually do our training and our scheduling. So with that being said, I'm approaching boxing more from a hobbyist perspective and more so from a confidence perspective in terms of my fighting ability. My boxing schedule has to fit around my workout schedule, not necessarily replace it. Now, let's say you actually wanna do amateur fights, you're trying to go all in on boxing while still being fit, that's gonna take a little different approach. And if I was to do that, you'll probably need a different routine, but I'll save that for later in the video. Now, up next, let's go through my actual personal routine that I do currently right now in terms of when I go to boxing and when I go to the gym. So on Mondays, I do my morning boxing. Then in the afternoon, I do my push workout. On Tuesdays, I'll do my pool workout with no boxing. On Wednesday, I do my afternoon legs with night boxing or late evening boxing. Thursday is a rest day. Friday, I do morning boxing and then an afternoon upper body workout. And then Saturday, I do legs and no boxing, then Sunday rest. So we look deeper into this routine. I'm actually doing a push, pull, legs, upper, lower, routine. Now, before this, I was actually doing a push pull legs routine six times a week. The reason why I changed to a push pull legs upper lower is because that rest day I found just gives me better recovery. And then also whenever I combine my push and pull workouts into just one upper body day, I just have just overall better recovery because if you guys have been to any sort of boxing class or you've seen the one that I recently posted, you'll see how cardio intensive it is, how a lot of it is shoulders and just obviously pushing sort of movements. You're not really working a lot of pull muscles. So I found personally this has worked best for me. Now let's talk about the boxing frequency. Currently right now, I found that works best for me is anywhere between two to three times a week, ideally three times a week, as I've stated in the routine. And I found that this provides me enough frequency and practice to learn and implement without sacrificing my workout volume. I kind of approached it much like learning calisthenics skills. So back when I was 19, 20, 21, I wanted to learn planche, front lever, and handstand. And when I was learning this and implementing it in my routine, I approached it the same way. I was like, okay, how do I implement this around my reps and sets to where I'm still getting good enough frequency? And so far, it seems that three times a week will give you that just enough frequency to where you're able to actually learn and apply the things that you're doing, but also not enough to where it's taking over more parts of your life. Sure, I could probably do it four times a week, five times a week, but we gotta keep in mind, my, my goals here, my fitness goals, right? I wanna be able to build muscle, currently on a lean bulk right now, so I don't wanna be too much in a high total daily energy expenditure because that just means I have to eat more food. Now for me as an ectomorph, that's actually a bad thing. I don't wanna do that. Now in terms of the workout split, this gives me enough volume and frequency for all muscle groups and once again, rest days to fully recover. I never wake up one day and feel like I'm too tired or my muscles are still sore. So far, this has been absolutely perfect for me. And much like anything, it takes trial and error. So at first, I was actually kind of mixing up the days. I was going like on a Tuesday, sometimes a Thursday, but once again, going deeper into frequency, in terms of boxing, I like it equally split throughout the week. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I didn't like going Monday, Tuesday, and then going Friday. I need it constantly fresh in my brain, and that's actually a good way to learn new skills. So I'm not sure if you guys have heard, but Allegedly, in order to learn a skill and master it, it's gonna take around 10,000 hours, which is a very long time. So my boxing classes are one hour per class and I go three times a week. That's only three hours a week. Now I'm not about to do some math, but if we do 10,000 divided by three or whatever the math is, basically it's gonna take a very, very long time for me to master boxing. But what you guys don't realize, and this is what I realized too, in terms of learning new things, is the fact that you actually learn most of your foundational basics within the next two years. 
and pretty much your base will set up everything. So I'm sure you guys have also heard of a principle called the Pareto principle. Essentially it's the 80-20 rule. And going deeper into skill acquisition, I've learned that basically 80% of your results is gonna come from 20% of the action you put in. So what that basically means, the way that I phrase it into learning this new boxing skill is the fact that 80% of my results will come from the little amount of work that I'm doing. In order to truly master a skill, get to that 90%, 100% results, that's gonna be more freshening up on your technique, learning more little nuances about the skill or sport. So what I'm basically saying is that even with this frequency of three times a week, it is good enough frequency to provide a good learning sort of experience so that you can actually make progress. Now also one thing about boxing too is that it has definitely improved my cardio. In fact, I treat going to boxing class just like doing cardio. That's why I no longer do cardio as a part of my workouts. So I'm not doing Stairmaster. I'm not doing any of that stuff because when I go to class, I'm doing jump rope. And overall, I feel like it has had a positive impact on my cardiovascular health. And that's also why I like going three times a week. Now, one thing that has definitely helped me improve my footwork and cardiovascular endurance has been jump roping. Now, if you don't know, I've been jump roping for years, guys. I used to do it before my workouts, I'll do it after my workouts. Whenever I'm in a cutting phase, I would do jump rope workouts all the time. And going into boxing class, I truly felt like I had a good head start between everybody else because I've been jump roping for so long. Now the jump rope that I've been using for years and still every single week till this day is today's sponsor, Cross Rope. Cross Rope has been setting the industry standard for years when it comes to making premium jump ropes. And now Cross Rope just released their new connected workout experience called AMP. And this is unlike any connected workout experience you have ever tried. AMP makes getting started with personalized workouts and programs a breeze. It's designed for various fitness goals like weight loss, strength, and cardio. The workouts are not only engaging and addictive, but also offer real-time feedback. Plus, with access to over 2,000 workouts, you'll never run out of options. Now, using AMP has been a game changer for me. The guided workouts and stats tracking has significantly improved my performance. And the best part is super affordable, unlike other connected workout experiences, only costing $9.99 a month. Also, what I love about AMP is its portability. Unlike other fitness equipment that ties you to one place, with AMP, you can train anywhere using your iPad at home or a phone on the go. Plus the weighted ropes increase calorie burn and muscle engagement, making the workout that more effective. Now Crossroad also offers ropeless attachments for those with limited space or who prefer a quieter workout. These attachments pair perfectly with AMP, ensuring you still get the full workout experience. So if you're looking to elevate your jump rope workout experience, check out Crossrope and their AMP system. They're backed by over 20,000 five-star reviews and offer a 60-day money-back guarantee. Don't forget, you can save 15% with my code Austin in the description. I'll leave a link down below. So we talked about how I balance boxing and my personal fitness routine, and we also talked about the cardio. But here's the thing, I understand that not everybody has a time and the availability to do that sort of push-pull upper lower routine that I do in boxing three times a week. So here are some other routines that I would try if I was more lifting focus. The first one is an upper lower routine. So on Monday, I would do upper and boxing. On Tuesday, I would do a lower body routine. Wednesday, I would do boxing. Thursday, upper, and then Friday, lower and boxing. Personally, I found that doing boxing after working out and having a few hours in between, or at least having some sort of at least four to six hours between your sessions, tends to overall make me perform the best versus doing it back to back, like doing a, a workout and then immediately going to boxing or doing boxing, then immediately going to a workout session. You ideally always wanna have a good amount of time spaced in between. Now at the beginning, I did mention how if you're more boxing focused, I would probably approach this totally differently because the goals are obviously different. You're not trying to get absolutely huge, absolutely jacked. You're not trying to optimize everything about your workout routine. So with that being said, I would either do a bro split, so just one muscle group one time a week, or I would do a push-pull leg sort of routine Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then throw in boxing wherever I see fit. So either on my rest days on Tuesday and Thursday, or after my workouts whenever I had the time. But if I was prioritizing boxing, I would ideally probably go at least five to six times a week. Now, some of you guys do know I am eating a lot more calories. I posted a full day of eating on my lean bulk. So the question is, how do I manage my diet now with all this cardio, all this activity. Obviously, boxing did increase my total daily energy expenditure, and I was able to calculate that throughout time to see where I'm kinda at. And I would say that I am burning a ton of calories, like 
an absolute ton, at least 3,200 a day, 3,000 a day. So that basically made me adjust my total daily calorie intake by 300 in order to consistently still gain weight and not plateau within my lean bulking phase. So that's gonna be anywhere for me, at least 3,500 calories a day. Yes, I know, it's a ton, and trust me, I actually don't like it, I don't prefer it. It's been very, very hard to manage, but I'm finding more ways and new efficient ways to actually get that many calories in without sacrificing my health or my energy levels too bad. Also, I used to walk every single morning two and a half miles upon awakening. Now I have reduced that to probably like just twice a week. I still go outside and walk, like 10 20 minutes but i don't do a whole two and a half miles anymore like i was doing before i still love to get my sunlight but you know you got to manage different things and that comes with having new routines or adding new things to your routine and plus you can still gain weight and have great cardio i think the biggest example that comes to mind is andy ruiz he is somebody who is clearly not the leanest, not the most real, but his cardio ability is absolutely insane. And that's when I was, I was learning, like there's a bit of a correlation between cardio and your body fat percentage or how much muscle and weight you have. But if you're training your cardio consistently while putting on weight, then your VO2 max should get better. And thus you should still be able to have pretty good cardio. So that is how I manage my newfound boxing with my workout routine. It's not the easiest to explain, but hopefully this has sparked you some inspiration and ideas if you're looking to do the same thing. Don't forget to check out Crossrope's AMP system. This is gonna directly help you with your boxing ability because we all know jump rope helps with footwork, cardio, and a lot of other things too, all right? So be sure to check them out. Link will be down below. I'm gonna see you guys in the next video. Peace.